one very powerful way to practice strengthening our vibe is to spend time at a monastery. Maybe one week a year or whatever you can do. It's interesting, Buddhist monasteries and Catholic monasteries and other kinds of monasteries in different traditions, even though they are completely different religious traditions, there are so many similarities. Uh, all of them wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> oh, goodness. If I ever create a monastery, I don't think I'm going to put sleep deprivation at the top of the list. <laughs> Probably one of the reasons why I'm sick right now. I don't know. I don't know. But What's wonderful about, about a monastery, it doesn't matter what kind. Just go to any monastery, Catholic monastery, Buddhist monastery, whatever other kinds of monasteries there are out there these days, I don't even know, but just go. A true monastery will be near nature and will have some quiet. A true monastery will have people that live there full time, that take care of the property, that garden and that cook and clean. A true monastery will have people there living who, who make spiritual life number one priority. And just those parts of a monastery are already enough to really support your practice. Because to be in that kind of environment is so, so healing and so cleansing and so, so supportive. The reason why it doesn't matter which tradition is because really what matters is not religious belief. It's not about religious beliefs. It's more about spiritual practice, spiritual cultivation, and spiritual development. You see? I think that's why Thomas Merton, a wonderful Catholic monk, said of Thich Nhat Hanh, a wonderful Buddhist monk, that he that he feels that this simple, humble Buddhist monk from Vietnam, he feels sometimes an even closer brotherhood with him than with some of his other Catholic uh, acquaintances. Because true spirituality, true depth of spirituality, it isn't dependent on religious belief, but on spiritual practice. Because you could have, <clears throat> you could have a, a Buddha, someone who calls themselves a Buddhist, but who doesn't really practice. And a Christian who may not know much about Buddhism, but practices loving kindness, forgiveness, healing, supporting others. From my point of view, as a Buddhist, the Christian is more Buddhist than the Buddhist. Because it's true Buddhism and true Christianity is not about religious belief. Although, of course, you know, religious beliefs are part of it. But more important than religious beliefs is spiritual practice, spiritual cultivation, spiritual development. That's what's most important. What's interesting is that when you meet people from different religious traditions who are very spiritually mature, spiritually developed, whose heart is spiritually very, very profound, they're not the ones who, who, who uh, declare the wars. They're not the ones that that uh, look to the scriptures for uh, excuses for violence. No, they're the ones who are totally okay holding hands with, with people from other faiths. They're the ones who are totally fine with dialoguing peacefully and sharing information so that we can mutually enrich each other. You see? So even though <coughs> I might call myself a Buddhist right now, and maybe we do a lot of Buddhist things here, but really it's not about Buddhism, honestly. It's about spirituality. I just personally like Buddhism, so you know it's going to look a little bit more Buddhist here than other things. But you know, <laughs> but it's like, a, it's like, it's like this, this light, this lampshade, or that one over there. The light itself is light. And so the truth is truth. And there's no such thing as uh, 
Christian light versus Buddhist light versus, Jew versus Jewish light versus Hindu light. It's only one light. There's only one infinite light. And when I chant Amitabha, even though Amitabha is a Buddhist word, but I'm using it to go beyond Buddhism to the infinite light beyond all of the, these isms. That's what I'm really touching when I say the word Amitabha. It goes beyond. And when someone else is saying Hare Krishna or Hallelujah, if they truly practice deeply, they can go beyond to the one infinite light that these words are all pointing to. Same with this light. It's just one light. But some people like me, I might prefer a Buddhist lampshade or you might want a Christian lampshade or a Jewish lampshade or, or uh, you know, or non-religious lampshade. <laughs> And that's okay, you know? Lampshades make life more spicy, more interesting. So, you know, viva all the differences. <laughs> you know, celebrate all the different kinds of religious flavors. Celebrate all the different kinds of cuisines. Celebrate all the different kinds of dances and music and, and, and uh, cultural, uh, wonderful, heritages. Celebrate them. But celebrate them knowing that beyond that is the one infinite light, the one infinite light that unites and unifies all of us. And that's really the more important thing. You know, religious traditions sometimes get carried away by their own ism. And, uh, you know, even Buddhism does the same thing, and I do that sometimes too. And that's okay, you know. But when we believe strongly in something, it's the, it, it does help to preserve that tradition over centuries of time. Because honestly, if everyone just didn't really believe that strongly about their particular practice, well, how long is it going to last, right? It's like, it won't last very long. But when people believe strongly, they create a very thick, impenetrable container so that it can continue to go on generation after generation. But the problem is people start worshiping the container and not the contents of the container. People start worshiping the lampshade and not enjoying the light. So be careful, be mindful about that. Because Christianity, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Native American spirituality, all the different spiritualities, <clears throat> they're beautiful in their own ways. They have some of their problems too, but they have good points, of course, because that's why they exist. Celebrate it, enjoy it, love it, embrace it, share it. But remember, it's not about the ism or the anity or the whatever. <laughs> it's about the light of love, the light of life all of us are manifestations of, all of us. So, in the spirit of interfaith spirituality, one day, a couple weeks ago, in my, one of my retreats, it came into my heart from deep within to change my practice a little bit for that day to use the mantra, God is love. Now, some of you in the room may not use the word God. Maybe that doesn't resonate for you, and that's okay. When I say the word God, I'm not talking about an old man in, with a beard and a, on a throne in the sky, okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm not even talking about a, a being, necessarily, or a person. I'm talking about God as a word referring to the infinite light, the source, and the 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 ground of our, all of our, our being. So, so God is love. And since all of us are expressions and manifestations of that Godness, I am love. You are love. This flower is love. This tree is love. So as I was using God is love, breathing in God, breathing out is love. God is love. God is love. Silently in my heart throughout the entire day, my heart just opened to a, a deep wisdom. 
transcending religious boundaries. It's funny, that happens a lot at Buddhist uh, retreats for me. <laughs> Jesus comes up or whatever, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's funny. So you, you, would, you would think, okay, I'd have a vision of Buddha or something at a Buddhist retreat, but no, Jesus comes up or whatever. <laughs> or God or, some, or something else. But anyway. <coughs> God is love. And I began to see this truth of, of that transcends religious boundaries.